Howdy folks, John here with R2-D2, well, R2-D2's head anyway. Say howdy, R2. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. So something a little bit uh, different on my channel. As any who subscribe to it know, this is primarily an RC helicopter channel and DIY project channel. And I really can't think of a better combination of the two, DIY interest and radio controlled interest of really anything, doesn't have to be helicopters, of building a full-size radio-controlled R2-D2. You know, DIY and RC knowledge, they just complement everything that goes into something like this. And I just wanted to share my journey with uh, you guys because probably a lot of you, like me, uh, grew up with R2-D2, probably my favorite uh, little robot of all time, right up there with Robbie, of course. Ever since I was 10 and saw a New Hope, I wanted an R2-D2. I dressed up for one Halloween, I think a couple of years, homemade costume, looked crappy as hell. But I got the R2 experience when I was in my early teens. I tried building one out of a five gallon pail, stole one of mom's stainless steel salad bowls, drilled holes in it, that went over real well, and uh, put a little Radio Shack uh, radio controlled car underneath it. Uh, yeah, it was crappy, but again, always wanted to do one and you know over the last year and a half two years since the pandemic you really start thinking about projects that you've always wanted to do and put on hold so this is the time to do it so if you two are interested in building your own full-size r2d2 that's what this whole video series is going to be i don't know how long it's going to take uh, people say anywhere from six months to two years even longer but we'll see the dome didn't take too long. I got that all finished, as you can see, and that's where most people start, is with the dome, because you'll find out really soon if it's something you enjoy doing or not, and at least then you've got a finished working dome, hopefully, and you can scrap the rest of the project if it's just not your thing. But uh, I've really been enjoying it. I've already got uh, a good start on the body, and I'm just gonna be taking you through every step of this from the dome to the body, to the legs. And if you wanted to take a project on like this, might show you a few things to try out, give you some ideas. Probably gonna show you a lot of things not to do. I'm sure I'm gonna screw up along the way several times. Hopefully no huge train wrecks though. So today's video is just gonna be talking about the resources to find to build one of these. My R2 build is gonna be 100% 3D printed, but uh, you don't have to go that route. There's so many different ways to build these things and there's no right or wrong way. Even R2 himself, there's so many different variations on him depending on what movie, even what scene in what movie. So, uh, you know, don't think you have to be exact. Build it for you. That's what I'm doing. I just want an R2 that his head moves, he's got lights, he makes sounds, and you can drive him around with a standard RC uh, radio or transmitter. So let's get into the resources. So your very first uh, most important resource if you're getting into an R2 build by far is astromech.net. I will have links to uh, this site below in the description. And this is a, a forum you join. It's the official website of the R2 Builders Club. It's free to join. And this site is a wealth of information. I joined almost two years ago, kind of at the start of the pandemic and have been absorbing as much information in it as possible over the last almost year before I actually decided that I was going to take on this project. And it goes over all the different uh, materials that you can build an R2 or any of the astromech droids from, you know, from 3D printing it to full metal ones, to fiberglass, styrene, wood, all kinds of uh, ways to build one of these things. And they have information on everything you ever wanted to know from materials, electronics, drive systems, control systems, everything, painting, you name it. So first place to start in here is New Member Central. Absorb everything there, lots of great resources, and that'll get you started. And because this is a 3D printed uh, droid, the next most important resource and site is to join Michael Badley's Patreon, become a member, and this is where you can get access to all the 3D print files. Again, I will have a link to his Patreon page below in the description. Um, you can get his basic, I believe, R2-D2 print files on Thingiverse for free, but to me, for the little bit that it costs to become a Patreon, 
and the amount of work he has put into these projects, it's so well worth it. There's certainly other resources out there. Anything I think of, I will link also in the description, but uh, these are your two primary ones, astromech.net and Michael Badley's uh, Patreon. Now that we've gone over the resources, let's uh, end the video by quickly covering tools you'll likely use or need and uh, consumables. Obviously the first tool you're gonna need for a 3D printed R2-D2 is a 3D printer. I've just been using a little Solval SV-01. I got this printer about a year ago, uh, kind of with this project in the back of my mind and it checked off all the boxes. These things are not expensive at all and it's got a decent build plate size. It's not a huge printer, I'd call it a medium size and it's got quite a bit of uh, height as well for the gantry so you can easily print some of the taller parts in the R2 build. The minimum build plate size that is recommended for an R2 build is 200 by 200 but then you have to use a lot of cut files. Most people recommend 300 by 300. The Solval here is actually 280 by 240 and it can just fit some of the bigger files on that are meant for 300 size build plates if you go on the diagonal when you arrange them in your slicer program. Another really useful tool or guide I guess is this uh, printed droid print guide from Mr. Badley's R2-D2. It's by uh, Nightwing and there's the URL but uh, I will have a link to it as well below in the description and over and above just recommended print settings and kind of how you glue and put one of these things together. What I found most useful is it's got every printed part listed. So as you're printing everything, you can go through the list. I've been checking everything off so I don't double print something, which is really easy to do. There's just so many files, but good little manual. And as far as filament goes, obviously use what you are comfortable with. I am comfortable with PLA and I've been using eSun's PLA Plus. Here in Canada, this stuff's pretty good price. You can usually get it on sale for under 20 bucks a roll. And what I really like about it is you can get it in the refills. Quickly going over some of the other tools that I've used so far in this R2 build project to give you a better idea. I would imagine that uh, many of the viewers here on my channel already have a lot of this because you're already DIYers or you're into RC helicopters or some RC uh, hobby already. Anyway, I've used the uh, rotary tool quite a bit with the sanding drums on it uh, just to clean up holes in the uh, printed files. Used my hand drill so far quite a bit, uh, drill bit set of course for it. I also mount the sanding drums from my Dremel in my drill often so I can get uh, lower speed so it doesn't remove as much material but more torque so it doesn't stall out the uh, drum and also different size sanding drums, not just the little ones. Metric tape measures come in handy. Like any project, couldn't do without my digital calipers, one of my most used and beloved tools. Basic hand tools, of course, you're gonna need screwdrivers, pliers, cutters, wire strippers, knives, that type of stuff. You're also going to need a soldering tool of some sort. There's wires to be soldered on R2. Uh, and if you get into uh, PCB building, if you're doing your own boards or own light boards, yeah, you're probably going to need something a little bit better like a soldering station. But if it's just wires, just any old cheapy soldering iron will do. I've used a hacksaw a number of times so far. Also used a small sharp little chisel a few times to remove uh, supports and stuff on the print files. Just find this gives a little more control, cleaner cut over uh, using a knife. Something that I've used a lot more than I thought I would is my file set. There's lots of sharp little lines on R2 with square edges and that's where a file shines. You know, you just can't get a sharp clean edge with sandpaper, whereas a file you're going to get a nice sharp square edge in all those little recesses and areas on R2 that have those. And the file also leaves a really flat finish when you need that. Because it's plastic we're filing, however, the files do get gummed up fairly easy, so you're going to need a file card, also called a file brush, just to clean out the files. And last up is a tool that has been getting many hours of use. Many? Yeah, I'll say many. 
is a uh, palm sander. This makes such a tedious job go quick. Uh, lots of sanding involved in this project. Sanding all the print files, getting rid of the layer lines. I've had this little Dewalt palm sander for a good number of years. And what I really like about it is I can just use uh, square sandpaper sheets. You know, you cut them in four and they fit the sander properly. I don't have to look for expensive round ones here out in the boonies, pretty much impossible to find. But use what you have on hand and what's easiest to get. Seeing that I was just talking about our little handy dandy uh, palm sander, thought I'd cover consumables real quick. This isn't an exhaustive list because I'm still fairly early into the build myself. So uh, as, uh, as we go along, I may meet, need more stuff, but this should give you a pretty good idea of the basics. I think I've got most of them pretty well covered. Like I said, I like the sheets of sandpaper for sanding the PLA. I start with 60 grit, move to 120, then 220. After that, for the actual paint sanding, go to a wet and dry, start with 400 to uh, sand down the sandable primer, and then the final coat of primer, I will sand with 1000 grit before putting the final paint coats on. I'm not going to get into the actual paints. We'll cover those when we paint each uh, part of R2. I also have been using the sanding sponges quite a bit. Uh, R2's got lots of round parts on them and the dome and whatnot. And these can uh, do a nice job of conforming to that. You can even cut, uh, you know, your sanding paper sheets to go around the sponge to act as a you know, a sponge sanding block then. As I mentioned with the drill, I've been using round sanding drums on this build as well. This is just to clean up any round openings or holes in R2, there's quite a few. As far as filling seams in all the prints parts or any little defects in the plastic print, I've been using lightweight body filler. This stuff goes on really smooth and it sands easy. It's not that really heavy goopy stuff. Uh, it is a two-part auto body filler though, and it does set up pretty quick. You know, working time is about 10-15 minutes, and you can be sanding it within about 45. Also using glazing uh, and spot putty. This is just to fill in any little final imperfections that you may not have got with the body filler. Gone through quite a bit of this, probably going to go through at least uh, two tubes of it. For bonding all the PLA parts, I'm using CA glue. Medium thickness is what I've been using pretty much exclusively. It's thick enough that it fills in any gaps and it does give you a little bit of working time. You know, unlike thin CA glue, as soon as you press the parts together, they're bonded almost instantaneously. This, if you press it together and you notice something isn't quite lined up, you can pull it apart usually and get it back together. So you have a little bit more working time with the medium thickness. Also have been using a CA accelerator. Uh, don't use it much, but if a part is springing apart when I'm trying to hold it together, I'll just give it a little zap with this to tack it. Uh, but I try to let the parts uh, cure naturally. You'll get a stronger bond. Last up are fasteners. This is the one thing I'm having a hard time finding and much good literature on or documentation is the exact fasteners that are used. I will have a listing at the end of each section with the various fasteners. So that's pretty much it for consumables. Our next video, we're gonna start getting this dome together. Thanks for watching folks, and until next time, happy R2 building.